All right, if you are thinking about building an app for high level, a plugin, an automation, whatever the case may be, I'm gonna explain to you the biggest pitfalls that you're gonna come into. Um, this is gonna help you not have to redo all the work that you end up doing, okay? And why should you listen to me? Well, I've built several apps. Well, actually, that's a lie. I built one app that makes several hundred dollars and I've worked with several clients to help them implement different automations for their businesses in uh, high level. So let's talk about the biggest pitfalls. Now, the first and biggest pitfall is is keeping it all within high level. Let me just, let me just, oh, oh gee, uh, keeping it all in GHL. And by the way, if you're watching this video still, I recommend putting it at 1.5 or two times speed just so you don't fall asleep because I need to get that Actually, no, you should fall asleep so I get more view duration. Regardless, this is the biggest mistake that I see people making, is they try to keep everything within high level. So you could technically do your workflows within high level, like um, I'll just put this. So workflows, you could use like webhooks and you know custom custom actions to, um, to automate everything instead of using like Zapier or NAN or whatever. But even if you are smart enough to use something like Zapier or NADN or your own server to run all the actions, you're going to run into another um, problem, which I'll call it the source. Uh, I'll just call it the source of truth. I think I think people will call it this SSO, single source of truth, not single sign-on. Anyways, um, what you, <clears throat> what a lot of people want to do is they want to say, okay, high level is like the home base for our business. This is what everything should go through. So if we're updating a contact, we want to make the change directly in high level and have everything run through high level. Okay, so so let's maybe draw this out. So basically, high level is going to be your database. This is going to be a database um, structure. And then you would have events happening in high level, whatever your app is processing or doing. You would have stuff happening in high level. And then on the other side, you would have like, I'll just do like the Zapier. No, I won't do the Zapier logo. I'll do the NAN logo. You would have like NAN here, which is processing like your your actions, workflows. <clears throat> Whoops. And then that would be sending data back to high level. Now, this seems fine, but it's actually very problematic because you're going to run into problems where you're trying to change things within high level that just can't be can't be managed very well, um, especially within the workflows that are built into high level. And so what actually helps a ton, especially if you're, if you're using different apps, like let's say we have high level here, but we also have, you know, maybe we have, um, like square, which is like, say that's your, your payment processor. Then you have to also keep this thing in sync and this is not a database. So it can't be a single source of truth. You would actually want to have a, a separate database here and, and databases um, you know in the business world maybe if you're a developer watching this uh, you, you know this doesn't seem like a big deal but <clears throat> if you're not a developer you look at this and you think okay Airtable like Airtable I mean that can get expensive or Notion or Google Sheets no 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 you don't need that you need something like Supabase or or Firebase <clears throat> or uh, just like a basic like Postgres database, like it really doesn't matter. Um, just something like these. These are built for applications that actually scale, and so you're going to be able to host a ton of data on here and run a lot of automation before it really costs you anything, you know. And then even when it does cost you something, it's still extremely cheap. Okay, so this is um, this is going to be your best option, and basically the biggest advantage here is that we're going to be able to have your single source of, of truth here that you can look at whenever you make, whenever something happens or whenever you need to update data, you can look at this source of data and, and compare it to be able to make changes. So if you have a customer ID or let's say you have a customer stored in high level with a phone, right? Well, if, if someone updated their phone somewhere else, you might have to come straight into high level and then you might have to update it. Um, but then you would have to also do the same thing in Square. And this is actually a bad example because that would probably be fine. But what you could do is you could have a phone stored here and you could go, okay, what's the phone number that we're, that we're looking for? Okay, so we found a customer with this phone number. Now let's use the customer ID that, we has, that has that phone in high level, update them, 
and then update them in Square. And this is gonna allow you to keep track of multiple phone numbers, you know, emails, like, and keep customer profiles way more organized. Like, here's the main thing is you can actually add your own layers of, of organization to this database while high level really doesn't offer that. I mean, you can add custom fields and they have custom objects now, but there's always gonna be limitations, um, especially once you start messing with custom, with either of those, you'll find out why you want a single source of truth like this okay so this is this is my first piece of advice is have a single source of truth um built in okay and now so let me put a big fat one here because this is our fir our first pro tip now our second pro tip is going to be this one so what we're going to say is a lot of people you know no offense because i know you're guilty of this personally, I'm guilty of this, is everyone wants to make funnels work for everything, okay? So, you know, if it's a booking, they'll put it there. If it's a website, they'll put it there. If it's uh, some type of custom functionality, they'll put it there. Or an e-com store, they'll put it there. And that's great. You know, that's cool. High Level definitely intends to have you do that. That's how they sell it. You know, it replaces every single tool. It's the jack of all trades. But I say jack of all trades, master of none. Before I go into that, okay, never mind. So funnels, yes, e-com, everything like that. <clears throat> but what I what I highly recommend is if you're if you're building something with any complication. So let's say you're building a scheduling software and you're trying to replace um jobber right so jobber is a scheduling software but it has a lot of different features um better than high level i'm not an expert in jobber but i just know based on high level they're far behind jobber in terms of specific features now what you could do is you could try to make it work you could do a bunch of hacks and have a really shitty form and and that might work because i always say keeping things simple is the best way to build it Right, you want something that's simple because you have to start doing something simple to be able to build on it in the future. Um, but what people do oftentimes is they overcomplicate things, okay? And if you can get it done in a day because you're keeping it simple and it's not the most optimized thing, that's fine, okay? It's it's a business at the end of the day. You know, it's not all about this one feature. Um, it's going to be about everything combined. So so it's fine if you leave some features out, but when it does come, come time to implement these features, shit, um, what you're gonna wanna do is actually build a custom app that can do that. So bear with me for a second. So let's say, um, let's say you were selling e-com and you were like, God, this funnel that High Level has blows, right? Now, the, 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 the cool thing about I mean, I'm talking about in terms of custom code, okay? You can hire a developer like me to do it, or you can find a developer, or you can do it yourself, or whatever. There's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. But if you're having trouble, I was just talking to someone today who was having trouble with an e-com store. They can't use Shopify because they need HIPAA compliance, and there's not really any good options. Um, so what they could do, and what I would almost recommend is, because they're trying to piecemeal everything together and because high level is frankly never going to catch up to Shopify, it's always going to be behind. What you can do is you can almost build a very kind of simple version of an online store. And so you can build all this functionality out. You know, you have like your listings, you have add to cart, you have a cart, you have a cart icon up here, and then you have a checkout. And this is, I mean, this is not easy to implement, right? This is going to take a while. But what you get is a custom interface. You don't have to deal with high levels like bullshit development speed where it takes fucking 18 years to get something built out. You know, I think the workflow is still used GPT-4. They switched to it literally right after 4.0 came out. It's like they're never going to be current, okay? So you either live with it or you do what we're talking about here. So you can build out your own custom solution to whatever it is, especially, you know, if this is booking too a lot of people have trouble with the booking um the booking like funnels is what you can do is you could also just build out your own booking funnel right so you could just build out there's probably an open source version or if you use like bubble or some shit like that you could probably get you know uh 
you know, some sort of calendar solution just like this with some forms and a date picker. And all you have to do now is whenever someone books here, whenever they buy here, you send the relevant data over to, or actually, so what you would do is every time this page loads, you would look at the URL for your client, right? And that's, you would create a multi-tenant app. So this is, uh, I've made a couple of videos about this, but basically you have the same app and you can use it at different URLs. If you think about high level, if you log into app.yourbusiness.com, it's going to be different than app.mybusiness.com. It's the same app, but the logo, the details, the information are different. And that's exactly what you're going to be doing here if you if you have multiple clients. So you can just do that here, or if it's your own business, then obviously you don't need that. Um, but all you would do is when the page loads, you would pull out the relevant data from your database, you know, or you could potentially use high level, but I would not recommend it because it's definitely not optimized for that. Like I was saying earlier. Um, so you would pull out the relevant data and then whenever the, the action is taken on this page, then you can just, okay, wait, hang on. This should be a backward arrow. All right, whatever, you get the idea. So basically we're exchanging database data here to set up the pages the right way. And then whenever someone, you know, purchases or books, we can just send all that data out to high level using their API, okay? Their, their API is extremely powerful. And so you can build your own front end solution on top of high level and just have it integrate well with high level. This becomes a sellable asset. If you jerry rig some bullshit in a funnel, that is not a sellable asset. That's a liability. Every time high level changes something, you're going to have to fix it. And at, at the end of the day, you're building on someone else's platform. It's a huge liability. No one wants to buy your business. But if you actually build a software or a tool like this that integrates with high level and potentially with HubSpot or I don't even know another CRM, but if you build an actual tool like this, then that's a sellable asset and you have, you have full control over this. You can actually decide what goes on this page, what it looks like, how it works and everything like that. And the API for high level will allow you to keep everything in sync with your client's account or your account. And it can be basically completely automated with sub account creation and getting everything set up. So this is my recommendation. I, dude, I get people reaching out to me all the time who are just jerry rigging the fuck out of high level. It hurts to see. And um, yeah, this is my biggest advice is actually use an, a third, you know, an external source of truth and also use like a custom web page um, if you have custom functionality you need because this is going to be far easier than trying to jerry rig some bullshit so thank you for watching check the link below i have an agency where i can help you actually build out something like this um i am pretty busy at the moment so if you want to get help it's probably better to do it sooner rather than later um but yeah anyways thanks for watching see you in the next video